Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Fun fact, a baker's dozen is 13. Now, to be fair, it's been a while since I've counted how many slices are on a loaf of bread, but seriously, just look at this loaf of bread right here. That's gotta be more than 13 slices. That's gotta be at least 14. Season 11 was the last season of the show to air all of its episodes, and season 12 was the last season to premiere in any way, and that SpongeBob's creator Steven Hillenburg oversaw any episodes of before he passed away in November of 2018. Even though it was confirmed that the show would continue beyond that, only three months after his passing, around the time where Nickelodeon would have confirmed a season 13, Nickelodeon instead announced SpongeBob spinoffs. I was worried about the future of the franchise at that point because animated spin-offs don't go well. About four months later, in June 2019, the first spin-off confirmed was the main characters aged down to be kids and going to summer camp. Former crew member Paul Tibbet confirmed Steven Hillenburg would hate this if he was still around, which caused fans to go crazy because any and all spin-off projects even existing are disrespectful to Hillenburg and his legacy. At that point, I wasn't sure what would happen with the main series since they still didn't confirm a new season. It wasn't until July 17, 2019, shortly after the premiere of episode 486, Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout, a TV movie to celebrate the show's 20th anniversary, and the positive reception it got, where the show was officially renewed for a season 13. I liked seasons 11 and 12, and while I was still going to watch season 13, I wasn't as excited for the season as I thought I would be. Maybe because several episodes of season 12 still didn't premiere before season 13 did, it was the first season after Hillenburg's passing or after I graduated college, but I don't know. But as season 13 went on, it became much more of a challenge for me to watch than any season prior, even compared to the show's worst seasons, 6 and 7. This season makes me wish the show was over more than ever. But of course, the show is renewed for a season 14 in March 2022 and is currently set to premiere in 2024. So because of all that, I thought I'd share my thoughts and feelings on what I think would improve the season as a whole. I'm going to start off by sharing a few little things that I don't have much to say about. I think the animation is great, but I hope they tone it down to be not so fast paced like how it's been in recent years and focus on the writing more so than the animation. Don't worry, I'll get to that. When I talked about what I wanted to see for season 13, I wanted a more organized airing order compared to the cluster fuck of season 12's airing order. And that was fulfilled for the most part because even though episodes were still skipped over in season 13, it was nowhere near as bad as season 12 in my opinion, and I hope that'll continue in season 14. As of July 2023, they're still airing season 13 episodes. I still hope there will be a DVD release when it's done, same thing with season 14 in the future. Also, season 12 has not included episode 502, Quarantine Crab, on the DVD for some godforsaken reason, so I hope that'll be included on either a possible season 13 or 14 DVD as a bonus feature. Similar to how episode 1, Help Wanted from season 1, was put on the season 3 DVD as a bonus episode. Now for my bigger points. The last few seasons have really been pushing the over-exaggerated facial expressions so much that it's turned away some fans from the series, just as much as the worst episodes from the worst seasons of the show did. There were funny expressions throughout the whole series, but they weren't the only jokes they did. The older seasons prioritized the writing just as much as the animation. Even the worst seasons knew that the over-exaggerated facial expressions weren't what everybody loved about the series. The writing may not have been good at that time, but at least we didn't have to see Spongebob looking like this. Is this to keep the kids' attention? Cause fans like me weren't drawn in with the funny faces. There were actually funny jokes and good writing, and I want that to be focused on in the new season. The stories in the oldest seasons felt more dynamic with the characters. The characters showed development and the episodes had good morals. There are some episodes like that in recent seasons, like episode 375, Mall Girl Pearl from season 9, where Pearl was very sympathetic and the characters learned to respect the elders and to not grow up so fast that you'll miss out on all the fun. I want to see stuff like that again, instead of Plankton failing to steal the formula, Tonjot failing his boating exam, Squiver getting hurt, and Mr. Krabs' greed being taken to the nth degree over and over and over again. Less exaggerated facial expressions and better storylines would make things better as a viewer. 
I know there have been reused ideas since season 7 or 8 or so, and I get it. The longer a show has been around for, the harder it is to come up with new and fresh ideas. I wouldn't say that this season was horrible in reusing ideas, but most of the ideas didn't seem very interesting to me, and it seems that they're forcing some obscure characters into lead roles just to keep the show around. It also felt like some episodes are just absolutely stupid throughout the whole thing, like episodes 515, Pat the Dog, or 545, Ride Patrick Ride, where the execution just feels like whoever wrote them was on drugs when writing. I'm not a fan of how they're going about this, so I don't know how much more they can get out of ideas for this show. And believe me, this isn't the last time I'll be saying that. I wish they wouldn't do what the fans deem as Squidward torture for season 13, but of course that was ruined pretty much at the very beginning of the season. And as the season went on, he's been harassed so much that I'd argue this season is one of the worst seasons we've had in forever. I'm almost convinced the writers can't do anything kind for Squidward at this point. Even if he's only in one shot for one scene from the episode, they still seem to have to make him get hurt. Back in the day, he actually did things that warranted being punished. While that still kinda happens in the modern day, these days he's punished even if he just makes a smug face. Like, why? This was one of the reasons why people stopped watching the show back in the day, and now they're doing it again, and he's been hurt in some of the worst ways imaginable in this season alone. It may not have been like that in every episode, but it still happened a lot. Like, I'd rather them just not use the character if they can't think of anything better to do. I don't want them to write him off though, the show won't work without him, but this is just one of the reasons I feel season 13 is another downward spiral for the series. Please just make Squidward happy. And make me happy too. Of course, Squidward being hurt for no reason isn't the sole cause why this season has become a challenge for me. Season 13, in my opinion, is the start of another new era for the show, the Shameless Era. Around season 9 or 10, the show started putting in references to the older episodes. I'd argue they were more tasteful in seasons 10 and 11. Season 12 started to go a little overboard, and now with season 13, we're at a point of no return. For example, in episode 432, Don't Feed the Clowns from season 11, Spongebob sings a little ditty as he makes a hot dog. The Relish forms F-U-N, which is a reference to episode 21, F-U-N, from season 1. You could listen to that scene without watching it, and you wouldn't see the reference. It's nice, that's perfectly fine. But in episode 517, C-H-U-M-S, from season 13, someone else just sings the fun song outright. They're just used to a point where those who have been actually watching the whole season get more and more peeved. We also have constant references to the Spongebob theme song. Why? Yes, it also happened in seasons 10, 11, and 12 as well, but it's even worse here. Episodes 533, A Skin Wrinkle in Time, and 536, Salty Sponge, have them do a parody of the theme song in both episodes, but it goes on for the whole f***ing theme song, and I just don't understand why. I get it, it's catchy, but why does it have to be done in the first place? Why not use the Fairly Odd Parents or Victorious theme songs instead? But what pushed the shamelessness over the edge for me personally is the cross-promotion with the spin-off shows, Camp Coral and The Patrick Star Show. Most notably, putting spin-off original characters in the main show, like Narlene and Nobby from Camp Coral, and Grandpad from The Patrick Show in the mainstream episodes. I just can't stand to see that. You're already disrespecting Hilleberg with these spin-offs, and now you're expecting us to watch them? Believe me, I won't. I may have flaws, but I'm not brain dead. This season would have been that much better without the spin-off characters. I know it's because the show crew is being stretched thin with working on all the Spongebob related projects at once, but that's Nickelodeon's fault for not hiring separate crews for the other spin-offs. Speaking of which... Now here, we're going to start to get into touchy territory, so I apologize in advance if this upsets anybody. I'm not sure if the Spongebob writers joined the writer's strike, but even if they didn't, I think the Spongebob crew is probably the most overworked and underpaid cartoon crew on the planet. With the crew working on three plus different Spongebob projects at once, they're probably going through quite the hell just working on something Spongebob related that's not the main show. So I think they should get paid much more for what they're doing. Even if they're already getting paid a lot, I think they deserve to get paid so much more for everything they've done in the past few years or so. As for the voiced cast, 
This is something that was brought to my attention rather recently. I've seen people on Twitter talk about how Spongebob sounded off in season 13 of the main series and in the Cosmic Shake video game. Obviously this is because a lot of time has passed since the show started and the cast has gotten older. Of course Spongebob's voice and laugh will probably sound different over long periods of time. I personally haven't noticed too much of a difference, but I can't stop thinking about what I saw on Twitter. And here's why. Back in 2012, Ernest Borgnine, the voice of Mermaid Man, passed away, and ever since, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy have not had speaking roles in the show. Swanod's grandma has not had a speaking role since episode 314, Pet Sitter Pat from season 8, and all of those characters were basically retired from the show out of respect for their actors. Now, as of July 5th, 2023, Marion Ross, who voiced Spongebob's grandma, is still alive, but it's obvious why the character hasn't had a speaking role again. I admire that. For all the bad things Nickelodeon has done over the years, at least they never replaced one of the Spongebob voice cast members after they passed away. I hope that continues. Also, as a heads up, I'll be using the term retire from here on out just to sugarcoat things. And please don't take any of this the wrong way, I just need to get the word out there. In my opinion, I don't think the show will work without these 11 characters. They are crucial to the show being what it is. The show has worked just fine without Murray Man and Barnacle Boy over the past few seasons, and Spongebob's grandma has had a total of 4 speaking appearances throughout the entire series. But those are minor recurring characters. These characters are frequent throughout the whole show. Of course the series needs them around. Hell, the voice cast playing live action versions of their characters in Big Birthday Blowout alone shows to me that they can't have anybody else voice these characters. So if anybody ends up retiring at any point in the foreseeable future, I just desperately hope they don't get recast. Which also means if something were to happen, I just hope whatever season the show is in, that would be the last season. If some news like that were to come out while season 14 is airing, then I hope season 14 would be the last season. Don't get me wrong, I don't think that'll happen anytime soon. I'm sure that the voice actors are healthy, happy, and have a lot of life left in them. I just need to say these things. It would also be nice if that character had a grand swan song for their final speaking role in the series. For example, if Mrs. Puff has a last speaking role, don't have it end with the last shot we see of her in jail. Have Spongebob actually get his license and Mrs. Puff can finally retire or become happy in some way. That would be lovely to see. And then just end the series with that season. The voice actors of this show can't be replaced, especially not Tom Kenny. Replacing him would not only make Hillenburg spin in his grave even faster because Kenny voicing Spongebob was a part of Hillenburg's vision for the show from the start, but that would be crossing a new line I didn't even know was possible for Nickelodeon. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. This is just me saying what I hope they do with the show if something like this happens. I don't want it to happen, but I can't stop the future. Believe me, I wish I could though. And there you have it, those are my wishes and dreams for the upcoming season 14 of Spongebob. With how much season 13 has become a challenge to watch, with some good episodes in there, don't get me wrong, I don't know how many more upcoming seasons of the show I can take, so I might as well just say what I want to see in an upcoming season of the show again. I would love to drive to Nickelodeon myself and give them my wish list personally, but the last time I tried to do that, I got autocorrected on Apple Maps and I ended up by a river. And the worst part was that they didn't even get my list. So that's probably why season 13 ended up the way it did. So this time, I'm not using Apple Maps. I'm going to drive there myself, and I'm sure this will turn out way better than the last time. Two hours later. Well, now I'm lost. Maybe I should have used some kind of GPS instead of nothing at all. Oh well, you live and learn.